Hello, hello, everybody. Hello. Everybody joining us today. In this warm, warm, warm day in May, which is amazing. We, uh, everybody always uh, is worried about May long, hey? Well, maybe we might have an actual good May long weekend, hey? Hello, Dagny. How are you doing today? Staying out of the heat or you like being in the heat? Hello, Lori. Did you get all your your outdoor work finished up this morning, Lori? <clears throat> I like the heat normally. Actually, one of my favorite things is in the evening. I used to uh, get the kids, like last year, I would get the kids busy doing something inside or out, doesn't matter, but just so that they would leave me alone for a little bit. And then I we have um we have one of those they're like a like a couch thing that swings on the deck. Um, and so I would go out there and rest, just enjoy the sun, swing a little bit, rest. So I'm looking forward to that. But I've been sick, <coughs> excuse me, the last, I don't know, week maybe. So I haven't really been getting outside. And I feel like I've been missing out a bit. But <coughs> tomorrow, day off, Monday and Tuesday, day off with no kids even better so I'm hoping to uh, get outside and soak up some sunshine heat okay suffocating dry extreme suck yes yes they definitely do you can't get the lawnmower to work Lori oh no that's not good that is not good at all Anybody else out there watching, make sure that you're commenting so that I know who is on with us today. So I was watching a few YouTubes last night about distressed crayons because we haven't touched base on distressed crayons for a while and I have been using the paints a lot lately. So I wanted to check out, hello Marion, I wanted to check out some techniques with the crayons to see, you know, maybe if there's some new techniques I could show you or just maybe a little go over that I haven't talked about for a while. So, oh and hello Rhonda, I'm glad that you're there too, very nice. So, <clears throat> Hello, Wanda. How is Grand Prairie? Are you guys smoky still, or is it things getting better? All right, so Distress Crayons. Anybody use them, try them, love them, not sure what to do with them? Let me know your comments. So I have four techniques that I'm going to show you. I'm going to switch my, my camera right now so that... Uh, you can see, oh, I keep forgetting to move my little face there. <laughs> I should put it on the other side. So the first one I'm going to show you, so now I have to remember to always sit to this side, is I'm going to show you how to use crayons, hello auntie, to color texture paste, okay? This is probably a pretty straightforward, but I thought it was kind of neat, the technique that they showed, so I am going to do that too. Um, and I'm gonna use this stencil because I love this stencil from Gina K, and I don't get to use it that often, so I picked it to use. So I just have a clear palette tray here that I am going to use for mixing. Really smoky, yeah, oh man. That's, I'm, I'm glad that you didn't have to evacuate or anything, Wanda. I'm, I'm glad. I know it's been really horrible, horrible situation. And we don't w mish, wish that on anybody. I know we've had our fair share of fires in our area. And it is uh, not very nice when you have to deal with that. Tried them? Oh, yes. Tried them and liked them. All right. Well, maybe I can give you... Uh, few extra 
techniques today from them. I'm trying not to mix too much. It always seems like it, I mix way too much texture paste when it comes down to it. Oh, guess I should have tried <laughs> opening this one before. Oh, there we go. I had to get the muscles out today. So I colored my crayon and I'm using, what color is this? Abandoned Coral. I'm into coral lately. I don't know if it's a trend that's happening or I'm just, I don't know, I've just been drawn to coral lately. I'm adding a bit of texture paste, just regular Ranger opaque texture paste. And then this is the Paper Glitz from Picket Fence Studios. We have a whole bunch of colors in Paper Glaze, but the Paper Glitz, of course, is glittery and sparkly. So I'm going to mix some of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix this all together. It's a little bit di more difficult to mix because the crayon is not liquid right like as if it would be if you used a reinker or something like that so it ooh, it is a little bit more challenging to mix but i have a feeling that it's going to be beautiful once i get it all together here and then of course that it the color will lighten up because of adding the white to it right all right so so you can use your crayons for I'm blending into other mediums, okay? Yes, I agree, Wanda, very, very much. You have some, but you have not, you haven't had much success using them. Well, hopefully I can point you in the right direction here. I'm going to move my tray over. There we go. Okay, so underneath, of course, I have my make station, which I love, 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 love. I, <laughs> I use it all the time now. So just going to use this as, oh, it's really weird, that paper glaze. I don't know if you can see, but it like, I might not be able to mix that paper glaze with this. Huh, look at that. It just made it, well, we'll see what we can do. We'll see if we can get it spread or not. It like made it um, gummy, like slime almost. <sighs> weird very strange of course I didn't try this prior to this right so maybe you don't want to mix paper glitz with it because obviously it reacts for some weird reason but I just wanted to show you that you can mix mediums together to create sparkly effects so let's see what happens when I try to actually lift my stencil off here I'm pushing a little bit harder to try to get this to work into there my kids would he were here right now they would think this is a, an amazing science project <laughs> all right so I'm just gonna leave that because everybody gets the idea here I love this stencil though too sorry I'm just reaching for a baby wipe all right so your crayons used for coloring now I could do this again and just use straight texture paste I probably wouldn't get that globiness but yeah it's okay I wanted to see the the glitteriness in it just as long as it actually comes up like a stencil does oh yes 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 and of course I forgot to bring cloth so I'll lift this up so you can see the glitteriness in it hopefully it's very glittery that paper glitz woof that is glittered so this is nice if you want to if you know if you want to use texture paste now leaving the, the glittery stuff aside but if you want to use some texture paste you know being able to mix the crayon into it just makes it easier for you to customize your project and work with the same color combinations that you would maybe be inking with or you know any of your other techniques so I like the fact that you can use the crayon for adding in just trying to clean up my stencil here a little bit so it doesn't dry on there I never even thought about a water bath or anything and of course now I'm gonna have glitter everywhere okay sorry sticky fingers all right throw that out okay so the next thing I'm just gonna leave a baby wipe over top of that the next thing I want to show is what do I want to show let's do this one next maybe so on this the demo that I watched last night so if you don't know about, oh, hello, Lori, it's okay that you're late. Uh, if you don't know a lot about the crayons, and I think, Lori, you have some of these. Oh, I know you have some of the distress crayons, so I don't know. Do you use them? How do you use them? 
what uh, what do you like dislike about them just let us know because we're we're working on distress crayons today so these distress crayons whew, sorry out of breath um they are blendable with water and they are somewhat blendable what just themselves when you put them down however on straight cardstock they're not as blendable because they get absorbed into the cardstock so in all the videos and the different things that you watch about them they always say to seal your cardstock so whether that's with gesso or collage medium or what have you they ask that you seal your cardstock off actually you know what <clears throat> I'm gonna leave this I'm gonna go to this one. Oh darn it I forgot to get my water so this one I'll just let you look at that for a moment so that one has a crazing medium on it which I should have put on a little thicker I didn't know if my crazing medium was drying out or not so you can see if you don't know what crazing medium is it's thin like media gel but it, it cracks see so for one I wanted to try the crayons on top of it and for two I thought well that'd be cool to crack so this is hello Jenna nice of you to join so this is just plain cardstock with the crazing medium put on it which is like a collage medium that's just meant to crack and then all I did was I colored the crayons directly on there and I just blended them out with my fingers so you can see that they don't blend evenly nicely with just your finger right they would definitely blend better with water however what I wanted to show you with this one is the removal technique now whether you know or you don't know I'm not sure so you can remove your crayon with different ways so you could use like a paper towel or a cloth to remove I'll just use the corner of this baby wipe here oops to show you okay so look when you remove it see so you can use a baby wipe to remove which I have done that in the past however on the video I was watching last night I think it was actually Simon Hurley that showed me that if you get your blending tool and you just put it in a tiny bit of water so you don't want a lot of water and then you use it to remove and I'll just kind of do it in pieces here and you just sort of dab it and then you soak it up with your cloth oops of course my stencil's moving and my paper okay that when you use it with this sort of a tool it works a lot better because it'll get of course it gets the water in those cracks right so removal I think that that is one of the kind of the main uh, what's the word Pr properties of these crayons is the fact that you can do this removal technique with it because they are water reactive so that means that no matter what whenever you add water the crayons come back alive right so just gonna do that again so you don't want a lot of water right because you don't want to bleed your stencil I mean it did bleed a little bit on there but the less less is more right I'm just gonna dip this into some water so we can see the difference oh that oops that might be a lot of water all right so I'm gonna remove this oh yeah see that was a lot of water okay so baby wipe is in the middle just a straight baby wipe this is with a cloth dipped in water so you can see it was a lot of water and then this is with our blending tool so these would be amazing backgrounds for you to just do a whole bunch of card bases put your collage medium on your multimedia gel just anything in a thin layer and then to just color 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 this would even be good if you had kids or grandkids right let them color with the crayons just have to watch that they're not too heavy-handed of course and then you could just take any stencil you have and just lift that crayon off of it 
and it should almost go right back to white. All right, so there, one technique. And then just like, if I would have put my Crazy Medium on a little bit thicker, you know, you would have had the crackling and then the texture with removing the color with the stencil. So you don't have to, you have to seal the, the paper itself, Wanda. Uh, you, because, I'll, I'll show you before the, the video ends what the difference would be if you didn't seal the paper. Okay, oh, actually, I'll, I'll show that next. Okay, so this one again. So that was collage medium on there. Now this paper, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Distress Micro Glaze. I actually tend to push it quite a bit. It's a, a sealing medium. It's very, very creamy, like Vaseline almost is what it is. It even comes in a little jar like Vaseline would. And you basically rub it on your surface and then you just buff it off with a dry cloth. So on this cardstock, I have micro glaze on this side and then I don't have anything. It's just pure cardstock on this side. Now the reason that I wanted to, and I have not tried micro glaze, I don't know if there's a YouTube video out there that shows it or not, but the reason that I wanted to do it is because the fact that you do have to seal your paper to use these crayons, you get your brush strokes, right? And for some, that's okay. And for many purposes, that would be just fine. However, for me, I sometimes don't like the, the texture on there. So I wanted to see, because micro glaze, that's the whole purpose of it, is a sealer. So I wanted to see if we colored on here what the difference would be versus the side that has micro glaze on it and the side that doesn't, okay? So I'm gonna color across. And then I'm gonna use my finger. So this side has micro glaze. Do you see that, how it's blending very nicely? This side doesn't have micro glaze. Okay. I'm gonna do a few colors here and then I'll lift it up to show you. So I'm just coloring across. You can see it goes on kind of like Maybe not as creamy as a pastel you would have maybe used in school. And I'm pushing quite hard here on the cardstock side. And again, these also don't really blend when they're dry like this. One will go over the top of the other. So make sure if you're using your fingers to always either use a clean finger or to wipe off in between crayon colors otherwise you will just blend it out okay I'm just doing this because these are the shimmer crayons and I wanted to just kind of see them so micro glaze side you can see how much easier that is than this side and then on the bottom I just want to put some of this uh, brushed pewter on here just to see if it has any different properties than the regular crayons because I do have the sets of metallic crayons as well. So, I'm gonna lift this up so you can see the difference. Let me just get it in frame here. Micro glaze, plain, simple, ordinary cardstock. So do you see that difference? Now what I'm going to do is I have a brush with in just a cup of water. I have a paintbrush, straight water. Now I'm going to try to blend it out with water. And we'll, again, we'll, we'll see if we can see any changes, okay? I feel like you can definitely tell that this side has the micro glaze on it because it blends very sm like it even the feel of it when I was rubbing it with my finger you could tell that it had a, a shiny thin surface on there so to answer your question Wanda what you would want to do on your scrapbook pages is seal it with micro glaze first and then put your distress crayons on there 
So even as I'm blending this out with just a little bit of water, I feel that the side with micro glaze on it is blending way smoother. This I feel like you can't hardly get the cardstock side to blend at all, but I'm gonna lift it up so that you can have a closer look. Okay, so micro glaze on this side and just regular plain cardstock. I'm not sure, Dagny. I think it would be better if you maybe put the glaze again over top. Um, because it takes such a small amount, that's maybe what I would do is completely seal it in. But maybe I will try that on the next live just to see. Okay. So that should give you a little bit of an idea. Now, because I we were just playing around with this one, if I now take my brush and try to blend this one out because this has the collage medium on it. Let's see the difference. So this blends exactly how you would expect it to blend with that medium underneath it. Now I'm getting it mixed. Now, however, like I said, you don't you want to be careful when you're moving colors into onto other colors because they will just layer. They don't blend like ink blends. They layer even though they're water reactive because they're so pigmented, they tend to layer on top of each other rather than blend together like your oxide inks or any of your other inks would. So I would, I think I would definitely say if you're going to be using water, definitely expect a different result than you would with inks. The pencils do. I'm sure that the pencils would, Lori, absolutely. And yes, the Distress Crayon is exactly like a pastel. Yes, I would say that's kind of the texture. So one more technique. Ooh, I'm running out of time, but I just wanted to, to do one more technique with you to show you. So on this paper, all I've done is gooped some gesso on there. So you can see quite easily, I'm sure, that there's just these goops of gesso. So again, I wanted to be able to show you differences. Oh, where are my magnets? between a gessoed surface and just a plain cardstock surface, okay? My intention was sort of like a bit of a sunset-ish <laughs> type coloring with this one, but for right now, we'll just go with it, right? So again, using my finger, and I, the gesso resists a bit more in friction wise than the micro glaze did for sure, but I still find the gesso easier to blend on than the cardstock itself. So I guess one main note to take from this is that if you do want to just blend with these crayons to make sure that your surface is coated with something. So whether that's me multi-medium, whether it's collage pay medium, whether it's texture paste of some kind, probably like the glossy texture paste. Um, I know they even on the videos I was watching, they even said a thin layer of clear gesso. I use white gesso on this, but if say you didn't want to have that white color showing through, you could use just a clear gesso. So for you Wanda 2 on your scrapbook pages, if it's a patterned paper and you want and you want that color, so this is just cardstock and look at that, it's horrible. That doesn't want to blend at all. Uh, you may, you could use clear gesso. The nice the so the difference with the clear gesso versus like the micro glaze is the clear gesso you would have to put on with 
a brush and you may get those streaks on there. That would be the one downfall. Where the microglaze, I feel like it goes on a lot smoother and you don't get those streaks from the brush strokes that you did. So I hope that you're enjoying my hard work, hard work of doing this. I definitely would not do this without some kind of primer on your cardstock because it's it gives you a run for your money for sure. And this is kind of getting choppy, but I just want to. Okay, let's put in what's this one? Dried marigold. Let's put a little bit of this in just to kind of fill in. This isn't the, the prettiest project, let me tell you, because I'm not really, of course, paying attention, but I'm going to just do this, a little bit more, put some extra colors, and then I'm gonna do my stencil trick again, where I'm going to try to remove color off of this so that you can see the difference to see if the color will even come off the cardstock once it's soaked in. Um, what color, what's this, the dried marigold? Yeah. So just, sorry, I might keep you guys over. I hope you're not having to run somewhere. Okay, so I got this stencil and I'm just gonna get another baby wipe here for now. And so let's just give this a whirl with, ooh, my finger's getting sore. to use my other finger. <laughs> I rubbed my poor finger raw doing this. Now this one I I actually really like this technique. I think this would be very cool on some different surfaces for sure. All right so you can tell Oh, you mean the distressed crayon? Oh, with water, I'm sure, yeah. Okay, so you can see where the gesso is versus just the cardstock, and you can hopefully can see the difference. On the gesso, the crayon came almost right off, where on the cardstock, you still get like a shadow sort of a look. But that's pretty cool, don't you, don't you think that's a pretty cool background? Now let's add some water, should we try that? Oh, the initial imprint. Uh, you're right. Yes, Ranger makes the microglaze. I can grab my container and just show you it. You can use gesso over a stencil. Yes, absolutely you can. It is a bit of a thicker medium. So yes, you absolutely can use gesso over the stencil. And then you could put the crayons down on top of it. Absolutely. So I just wanted to see if... This is a thicker cardstock, but I don't think it's watercolor cardstock. So I just wanted to see the difference again if you add water, what's going to happen here. Oh, so look at that. The jet when I add water to try to blend, look at that. I end up wiping the the crayon right off the gesso. So, let me just grab my microglaze if you guys are good to hang with me for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put microglaze over these other bits of gesso. So this is the microglaze. This is what it looks like. Comes in a little tube. Where am I here? Right there. Okay. It's just a little tiny tube, like compared to the texture paste. You can see the difference, right? When you open it up, I'm telling you, it looks just like Vaseline. Okay. A little tiny bit on your finger. I don't know if you can see barely have anything on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to rub this now on top of my gesso, my gessoed areas, just to see. So it goes on very, very creamy. Like you can see how my finger's sliding around. Oh look, that's also buffing off the thing. So, gesso is a little bit more difficult to deal with with these crayons. Uh, that is very interesting to me. Hmm. 
because now you're supposed to rub this to buff it off and I'm afraid that if I rub it I'm gonna just buff the whole thing off let's try doing it on this one that had the micro glaze on the on it already let's put this over top and let's see what happens I want to do this so that everybody is kind of aware of what the options are right so normally you would do that you would just rub it and then you take a clean dry cloth this is clean and dry <laughs> <laughs> just so you know and then you would just buff it okay and then that would seal that and you could do your stamping or whatever over top right and then it'll dry just wondering if this will change when it dries let's try this as well might as well try it all right I want to see what the microglaze does when you put it over top of the different mediums so maybe if you let it, well, you're not really supposed to let it dry. I think you're supposed to apply over artwork with finger, buff away excess with a dry paper towel, it says. So it doesn't really say to let it dry, but I'm surprised that it is rubbing off so much of the crayon. Hmm. Well, that's something to learn, right? So maybe it would be a better idea to microglaze your paper first and then do your coloring and then to put clear gesso over it might be the, the solution. I don't have clear gesso right with me, so I can't really tell you, but yeah, that's crazy. And I put the micro glaze over here, look at it, it just buffs right off. So, interesting, hey? Very, very interesting. Now, so I had microglaze here. I put water over here on this one. So let's just try buffing this and see what happens. Oh, look at that. So you cannot use gesso because it doesn't seal on there. So until you found something that would seal over your ges your white gesso, which I said, which like I said, could have been, could be clear gesso possibly. I will maybe do some playing around or maybe I'll do it, pick this up on the live next week and see if we can find the solution for that. But I will still say that priming your paper with microglaze definitely seems like it works the best out of all of them. You know, it stayed on there. Now it's sandwiched in there so it's completely sealed. And I feel like you get the best solution out of that microglaze look. So over top and underneath is that one. So again, microglaze, I think I have about four jars maybe left on the website or like in the store and on the website. So if you're interested, it's there. Let's bring you back here. So hopefully we learned some stuff, right? I learned some stuff. I'm very surprised that, it, well, I'm not really surprised. Gesso is a sealer. So I am not surprised that the crayon would just wipe off. The crayon is a wax based. So, you know, wax, it's hard to find things for it to stick to, right? So we just need to figure out how to seal it. That would be the number one. So I'll play around. The other thing you might, you know what, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that one quiet because I just got a thought in my head and I might try something else for next week just to see because now I've got a couple other ideas. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, it still gives you some ideas regardless. And like this one here that I did, my camera's over here. I mean, this is still good. And if I buff this with a cloth, so I'm buffing it, you can see how hard I'm buffing it. I mean, it smears a little bit, but it doesn't actually come off. Now it would reactivate with water, of course, but for being the most durable was this one, treated with the crazing medium first, okay? So, we will continue. So thank you ladies for joining me today. I truly, truly appreciate it. I'm glad that I don't bore you with my demos, that uh, maybe you get something out of it as well as me. So, till next week. I hope everybody has a great, nice, warm week. Get out and enjoy the sunshine. Let it soak into you. You know, us up here in the north, we need to do that. Have a great 
Mother's Day tomorrow for any of you out there celebrating Mother's Day.